After getting my driving license, I'm Italian. Here you have to be 18. I was hanging out with my friends in Rome. There were five of us, me and four passengers. It was around midnight when we hopped off in a square in the south of the city with a football to play with. It was during summer vacations, so it was a normal thing for us. After some time, a guy in his early 30s came to us with a big travelling bag. He wasn't creepy, but he was strange. He was skinny, but very toned and athletic. Short trousers, very used sneakers, a long sleeve shirt, beard, greasy long hair and a baseball cap. Not a common look for an Italian 30 year old man. He started some chatting and then asked if he could join us playing. We were just passing the ball without it letting it touch the floor. After some minutes playing, he started to ask about our interests and then about our sex life. I'm a shy guy, but some of my friends aren't, so they started to go along with him and he started to show us, without a reason, finger push-ups, one leg squats and some other cool exercises. One of my friends was fooling him and treating him like a stupid person, always asking for more exercises. I forgot to say that he hid the big bag he had between two parked cars, one was mine, before he started playing with us. The friend of mine who was fooling around with him sent the ball a little bit far from us and faking a fainting asked the guy to get the ball for us. Meanwhile, my friend asked me to unlock my car. He grabbed the man's bag and froze the bag inside the back of my car and invited me and my friends to hurry and go away with the guy's bag, leaving him with the ball. In a few seconds, we went away and he started chasing us running. But after some distance, he disappeared from my rear mirror. He was very fast though. I'm not a thief, but as a teen, we do stupid things, and I really didn't want to do something like this to a random guy. We went to a park near our houses, and my friends started opening the bag. And here, the thing started to being creepy. If you don't know, in Italy, it's very, very, very uncommon that people are armed. We found dirty clothes, a knife, not a kitchen knife, but a dagger, some food, and a small box with three-digit locker. Now, we were so curious about it that we smashed it on the floor trying to open it. After some throws, the box revealed 16 female IDs, all different. I started to worry about my safety since we used my car and he could remember my license plates and maybe find me in some way. We also started to think who that man could be and why he carried these things. So we went to my friend's house, we switched cars and we went back with my friend's car to the place where we met the guy just to check. We arrived there and were hiding under the windows to make the car looking with only the driver inside. When we got there, more than one hour later, he was still there sitting on the car who was parked in front of mine. He didn't notice us and we went back home with a lot more doubts about him. After 10 years, I still remember this guy. The day after one of us went to the police with the bag saying that he found it in the road with the dagger and the IDs inside. He made an official report, lying, but surely doing a good thing. This happened a couple years ago, and while not the scariest situation, it was definitely creepy. I was on my way to work and decided to stop by the mall first to pick up some things I needed. As I was walking to my destination, I heard a voice behind me say, Hello Megan, how are you? I turned out expecting to see someone I knew, but I was surprised to see a tall man I've never seen before, smiling at me. He said, Hey Megan, again, and I sputtered a meek, Hi, and kept walking. I thought maybe he said ma'am, and I just misheard it, so I, so I ignore it and keep walking to my destination. Once I get to the store, I notice he's still behind me and he enters the store with me. My gut is telling me this is not normal, but I try once more to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm looking through a rack of clothes when I look up and see him looking around the store as if he was looking for someone. I'm 5'1", so I do well to hide in stores with racks and clothes, so I just grabbed what I wanted and walked to the front to pay. I looked up again and he was standing right by me and staring. The cashier and I shared awkward glances and I paid and walked out with this man right on my tail. So I got fed up and turned to him and said, what the hell do you want? He then said, you, 
and just walked away. So I walked to my car the whole time looking over my shoulder to make sure he wasn't nearby. And once I was inside my car, I'd pull out my phone to call my dad and notice I had a Facebook notification, which was a friend request from this stranger. I called my dad, who said to check my Bluetooth or AirDrop to see if it's on and it wasn't, because I never use Bluetooth. I look out my car window and see this guy looking around the parking lot, looking in car windows. I tell my dad and he tells me to just go, so I did. I blocked the guy on Facebook and haven't heard or seen him from again. I hope I never do. I grew up in the small city of Penascola, Florida. It's a beautiful place known for white sand beaches and an island lifestyle. Since we didn't have much else to do besides the beach, the Pensacola Interstate Fair that would come every October was exciting for kids and adults alike. In October of 1996, my mom took me, my sister and I to the fair. I was eight years old, my sister was 10. We rode all the rides and ate funnel cakes. My mom convinced us to go to a haunted house and I wasn't having it. My sister wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, but I thought it was boring. So my mom said my sister could go and her and I would stay and watch. My sister went and while we were watching, the wheel stops. I asked mom what happened and she said she didn't know and went to ask. The carny told her it was just mechanical and they were sending someone up to fix it. Nothing made her. My mum and I stood there, watching this man climb up the ferris wheel until he got to the top. I was bored looking around, until I heard people scream. I looked just as this worker's body slammed onto the first metal rod at the top of the wheel, and within one and a half seconds, my mum grabbed my head and forced it into her stomach to prevent me from seeing the rest. My ears and her crying told me this man hit every rod down around 23 metres. The next thing I know, my mum yells at me to go to a game nearby and don't move a muscle while she went to get my sister. I did, but I was terrified. Eventually, my mum and my sister came back. My sister said she actually didn't see anything bad because she was at the top and saw he was going to slip and closed her eyes as someone tried to grab his shirt, which ripped. I don't think I will ever get the image of that man dying. And to be honest, I don't even know his name. Between 2006 and 2010, I worked at Blockbuster. It was, to this day, the best job I've had. There was a program that I can't remember the name of, where you could choose between one or two DVDs that you could rent at once and keep for however long the exchange, then for one or two more continuously, paying a monthly price instead of by the movie. That deal would only be good for the particular store you signed up in, so we would get to know the people who were on these plans because they were always in the store. We had one regular couple, named Patrick and his girlfriend, can't remember her name. Patrick taught karate for kids and always came in wearing his karate outfits. They had kids with them, but I believe they were the girlfriends. He was one of our favourite regulars. He would always joke around and when we had game setups, rock band, guitar hero, call of duty, he and my co-workers would play when it wasn't busy. I'd say he was in the store once every two days for a year, before he stopped coming in. I remember working the day he came in and told us he was moving to the next town over, so he was going to the blockbuster near his new home. I remember telling him how much we will miss seeing him and actually feeling sad. Well, one day in 2009, I went into work and my co-workers were all in the back talking about a murder. It was a big news in my small town, particularly sad as it was a couple that had fostered a lot of special needs kids and seemed nice. Well, how many Patrick was the ringleader and shot the father. I saw pictures of him while he was being arrested and in court and got the chills. His happy smiling face that came in the store all those times was now cold and literally different. What made him look so stupid was his method. They all literally wore ninja suits like the ones he would wear in his karate classes.
I can say I was a pretty brave or stupid teenager. I always came back home late, usually around midnight. I usually took the buses that go through a well-lit street near my house, but that night, because the bus I usually take had already left, I needed to go on a bus that stops near a forest, and it's kind of creepy and dark. My phone was dead, as usual. As soon as I got off the bus, I started walking home, and I noticed an old, homeless-looking man following me. After a couple of minutes of walking right beside me, he started asking if I was a university student, and I just told him no. At the time, I was 13 or 14 years old, and I didn't know how to react to this, and I answered his questions. He asked me then if I go to high school, and I told him no, I go to a middle school. At first I thought he was maybe just going my way and not necessarily following me, and I felt nervous and a bit scared. He proceeded to talk about something I don't even remember, as I was only focused on being ready if he's dangerous. After a couple minutes of us walking, a car stops next to us. There's a woman in that car. She looks at me and asks if everything is alright. I said yes, scared of his reaction, but as he was looking at her, I shook my head to let her know that no, nothing was okay. He started yelling at her, how that's because he's Jewish and some other stuff and was acting aggressive. While he was yelling, she asked where do I live and if she can drive me home. I froze. At that moment, as much as I didn't want to be next to this weird man, I had no idea if it was any safer to get into someone's car. I politely said no and they both followed me to my doorstep. I don't know if this is creepy enough, but to me, at that age, it was very stressful and scary. And I never knew the real intention of both of them. This is from a couple of years ago, when I was 21. I'm from Kazakhstan, and I now live there, but I studied for six years in Washington, DC. So I felt pretty confident about my resume. I had a job in a company that had a big office building with 20 floors. It was a regular day when I was entering the building. I walked past my colleagues, we greet each other. I press the ninth floor button when this guy walks by me and asks me a question. How are you, douchey? I was a little terrified and confused, especially by the word douchey. So I say, I'm okay, thanks. And I call the other elevator. This guy, about 34 years old, asks me, what's wrong, sweetie? And I say, it's nothing. The elevator arrives, but this guy doesn't walk in. I feel awkward, so I walk in first, and then the guy comes in as well. The doors close, and we just go up silently, until I hear a weird, loud sound. I could feel that we stopped moving, and so I press the yellow support button, but it doesn't quite work. The guy asks me, what happened? And I answer, I don't know, no idea. We stand there for five minutes until he asks me, what's your name, sweetheart? Um, Eric. Oh, I'm Nerzan. Nice to meet you. So, how's life, Eric? Pretty good. Are you married? No, but hopefully soon to be done. Where does your family live? Um, they live in a town, not too far away from here. Only my brother moved out. Interesting. You know, my wife passed away not too long ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we were divorced, so I haven't lived with her for a while. Why did she die? She was a crazy alcoholic. That was the reason we got divorced. Oh. My son, he is very beautiful. You remind me of him. Oh, really? Yes. I'm very disappointed that he left me, though. Why did he leave you? He didn't like living with me for some reason. Oh. I'm so sorry. Don't be. At this point, I was very scared. I was praying for the elevator to move. And after a few seconds, it actually did. As soon as the doors opened, I hopped out and was walking away very fast. The last thing I saw was his angry face while the doors closed. The last thing. When I reported this to my boss, a week later he said there is no work under the name Nerzan, except of a 27 year old guy who looks nowhere near the creep that was stuck with me. So 
So it was my third year in college, and me and a couple of college friends, all girls, decided to rent out a house. Me and two other girls were the only ones in the house during the summer. I shared the master bedroom with one other college friend. It was a crazy summer, because the area we moved into was known to be the safest area for college students, but had been hearing incidents where college girls were being followed by cars when they went out on runs in the area, or if they were walking alone. And one of my housemates had this experience. Along with hearing incidents where college students' cars were getting broken into. My housemates and I noticed that every time one of us left the house alone, we saw a white car following us. And a friend of ours who would visit us often began to also notice a white car following them afterwards. A creepy incident that still bothers me and has stuck with me is when me and my friend were having one of those late night talks, each in our own bed with the lights off. A really bright light shines into our room from our window and it blinded the both of us. My friend thought it was me using my flash from my phone. I told her it was way too bright for it to be coming from my phone. It was late at night, around 2 a.m. And by that time, our neighborhood is quite dark, obviously. We decided to go out and check our backyard with our pepper spray and see what was the cause of it. No one was there and not a thing or light was near our window. There's nothing else to it, but it struck with me because we never found out the cause of it. We suspected it was probably the person who followed us, but we still don't know. I'm an adult male in his 20s, and I had the creepiest encounter with two paedophiles when I was in 8th grade, 14 years old. I was on the subway, on the way to my private physics teacher. I was wearing slim jeans and a large t-shirt when that weird looking guy came up to me. He was in his 50s. He looked drunk, and I didn't pay too much attention to his actions, until he put his right hand on my shoulders and said, wanna be buddies? I was confused. But I just thought he was just a drunk uncle messing around with a kid, and I said, yeah, why not? It was a few stations remaining before my departure. One minute later, he says, would you like to make some love? And slides his left hand on my t-shirt slowly. I fucking yelled, get the fuck out! The two girls came up to me, they quickly grabbed me away from that motherfucker, they shielded me against him, and he looked kind of disappointed that his plans failed. The train stops and he quickly talks over to someone. Hey, Zaza, let's go. And two grown ass men walk out of the train. Since then, I've saved two kids from creepy strangers in buses. And I always watch out for kids if they're near them. I may look a little bit creepy, but if there's an 11 year old girl or boy sitting next to an adult man, I'll always pay attention to the interaction between them. English isn't my first language, and I hope you understand what I wanted to say. If not, I repeat. Never let your kids travel alone, especially if they have to cover long distances, ever. This story happened when I was young, around elementary school age, so some of the details might be fuzzy, as it was a long time ago. I was in a hotel and happened to be completely alone. Here's some backstory as to why I was alone. Our TV is hooked up to an antenna, so the channels we got were repetitive and boring. It also meant we didn't get the Macy's Day Parade. To solve this issue, we went to a hotel relatively close to us. Unfortunately, my mum came down with a horrible illness a day or two before, so she couldn't join us. We also got our room upgraded to one with a balcony. This is especially important because if the room wasn't upgraded, I don't think this would have ever happened. This happened the day we were checking out, so Thanksgiving Day. Our plan was to hang out the night before, wake up and watch the parade in the morning, then get home by the evening. It was around 8ish when the rest of my family, not including my mom, went out to run an errand that popped up. I, being lazy and not wanting to get ready just yet, opted to stay in the hotel room. Before he left, my dad said to double lock the door and always check the people ever should someone strange show up. He even did a practice run before we left. In some weird twist of irony, someone started knocking on the door not even five minutes after they'd left. Doing what my dad instructed, 
I checked the peephole. I expected to see my dad surprising me with another checkup. But the person who I saw looked nothing like my dad. This is where my memory gets fuzzy. I believe the man was very old, with grey hair that showed signs of balding. I specifically remember a small cardboard box he held in his hands. I remember thinking it was some sort of an illegal substance, even at my young age. Fear set in as I stood there, unsure of what to do. Then I remembered what my dad said to tell me, if this situation ever did happen. Stranger, are your parents here? No, they are down in the lobby, but we'll be up soon. Why are they down in the lobby? At this point I didn't know what to say. I'm sure now my dad meant talk to them if they are hotel staff, so I backed away from the door. In hindsight, I'm also sure he knew that my dad had told me. It would turn out his room was right next to ours. I ended up FaceTiming my mom. I had an iPad because I wasn't allowed a phone at the time. She contacted the rest of my family and said to get hotel staff on the line. I tried calling them, but they didn't pick up. Not wanting to annoy them, I didn't call again. I know that was stupid of me, but I was young and I didn't know how to handle this. While this was happening, the man began banging on my door with a new intensity and was yelling for me to let him in. With all of the shouting, I couldn't hear my mom, so I went out onto the balcony. However, that spot didn't last. I soon went back over to the peephole to see what was going on. There was what I believed to be a security guard, trying to help the man get into my room. The weird thing is, the key he was using didn't work for my door, so there's no way it could have been a master key the staff has. Not to mention this hotel doesn't have security, just staff, and I don't remember him wearing a uniform. He was also gone by the time the real staff got there. I walked back out onto the balcony, freaking out. That's when he went into his real room and began banging on the windows, screaming for me to let him in. Terrified, I ran into the bathroom and locked the door. That's where my dad found me. The man's excuse was that his son, around 15 or 16, and his girlfriend were supposed to be staying in our room. That was blatantly untrue, and probably to save himself. I didn't look old enough to be in a relationship, and he should know that once he saw me. If it weren't for my dad telling me to check the door, I would have opened it to that stranger. And with the perfect timing of his arrival and his knowledge of a young girl being alone, I have reason to believe he was stalking to us. Thankfully, I'll never know that outcome. We never did upgrade our antenna, but luckily, live streams became a thing. TLDR. A man knew that I, a young girl, was alone in my hotel room and tried to get in. Thanks to my dad's check before opening door rule, it saved me. Me, B, male 16, and my girlfriend K, female 19, decided, decided to hang out with my friend J, male 18. I haven't hung out with this kid in a while, so I was pretty excited to catch up. Jay is a pretty awkward dude, so I expected there to be some tension at first, which there was. He got to my house and we started talking about where to eat, and we decided on a Chinese buffet at this shitty Chinese place. The buffet food is usually fine, so that's what me and my girlfriend ate. Jay decided to eat sushi, which was a bad idea. This is when I started to feel a really uncomfortable vibe. It was just like a really gloomy feeling. Later, when we got back to my house, my girlfriend took a bath and left me and my friend alone in my bedroom. No matter what I did, it was really awkward between us and I didn't know how to calm the mood. He kept on whispering to himself and yelling at random points, usually when he was alone in the room. Whenever he would do this, I could never understand what he was doing. We were chilling on my couch when he said he had to throw up. So I led him to the upstairs bathroom, since my girlfriend was taking a bath in the downstairs one. When he was throwing up, he was also yelling, and I didn't know what he was saying. After he came out, he apologised, and I thought everything was all good. We went back downstairs, and my girlfriend was done with her bath, so we all started hanging out in my room. He started gagging, and my girlfriend started trying to find something he could throw up in, because he wasn't going to the bathroom. 
This is the moment when I started feeling something weird. It felt like a really dark and ominous feeling, almost demonic. I have a weak stomach, so I went upstairs and sat outside for a while. I started having a panic attack before I went upstairs because of this overwhelming sense of fear. I had no idea why it was there. My girlfriend cleaned up everything and helped him clean his clothes. Throughout the rest of the night, he kept talking to himself and there was just a really dark feeling coming from him. I used to hang out with him before COVID hit. We were weightlifting partners and we were always pretty chill with each other. The moment when I first saw him, something just felt off. He gained quite a bit of weight and he kept talking about how he admitted something pretty bad in therapy but wouldn't tell us what it was. He didn't even seem like the same person as before. He had some of the same little quirks about him, but he just seemed different. I don't know what the feeling of fear was, but I know that it just wasn't right. I can't explain what I saw in him that night, but I know that something was just off about him. Has anyone had a similar experience or information they may be able to give me about what happened? At the time, I was 26 and shopping at a Target just outside the city I live in. I wasn't there for much, just to kill time and maybe see what deals they had on clothes. I bought some clothes from clearance and headed out to my car, just to be stopped by a man and woman. They handed me a flyer and asked if I was religious. I, being polite, took the bait and said not really, but I was raised Catholic. They had asked if I wanted to go to their church, that it was a great community and talked about God a bit. They asked me some personal questions that I kind of danced around. I said I would think about it, but I got a creep culty vibe. The handout they gave me had the name of their church, but nothing else, address or phone number. I say goodbye and head quickly to my car and exit the parking lot. As I'm driving home, I notice a car behind me that has been behind me since I got off the highway. I didn't know how long it had been following me, and I wasn't even sure if it was following me. The city is dense, and it's not uncommon to be heading in the same direction as others. I see that the person in the driver's seat is an older man. The car is some white SUV, with glasses and facial hair. I make a note of this as he continued behind me. I turn on the street before my own, without signalling, and he continues by. I feel a little stupid and take the next two lefts to get to my street when I see him slowly driving past me. We make eye contact, and I'm a little uncomfortable, but again, he drives by. I keep telling myself, coincidence. I see him turn on the next street, and I park and rush into my apartment, a subdivided row house. I leave my target bag in my car, in a rush. So I get upstairs and I hear a buzz. Each floor apartment has a buzzer, but no intercom. I'm on the second floor and I can't see the door from my vantage point. I debate creeping into the hall to look down. It could be a package and we have package thieves that follow the trucks and steal within minutes. But before I open the door, I hear my downstairs neighbor, a guy around my age, talking. Once the vestibule door shuts, I wait a minute and then knock on his door to ask who it was. He said an older man asking for bus fare to the county. I ask him to describe and it's the same man following me. We realized he'd buzzed all the apartments. I assumed to try and get entry. I'm not sure if it's related, but I just had a bad feeling about the other couple and their church were related to the man following me. Like they had scoped me out for something sinister. I Googled their church and nothing came up. At least no church of that name where they said it was. It happened when she was 23 years old, living out of state with her boyfriend, now husband. It was a day off of work, and she was running errands alone with her boyfriend, who was at work. One of her trips was going to Walmart to pick up snacks and a gift for a birthday party. She headed for the toy aisle to pick out something for a gift. That was when she noticed a man in the aisle. He was staring at the toys. My sister noticed right away that he didn't have a card 
or anything in his hands to look like he was shopping. My sister picked up the item and moved towards the food aisle to get the snacks and extra stuff. She glanced up after picking up something, seeing the same man from before, looking at stuff. Again, he wasn't carrying anything. This made my sister very suspicious. She tried an experiment to see if the man was actually following her. She went to the DVD aisle. He was there. She tried the home decor aisle. He was there. Even in the women's underwear section. He was there. This really scared her. Anywhere she tried to avoid him, he would turn up in the same area. My sister had it with this man, wanting to get away from him. She made her way to the checkout while she picked up the phone to call her boyfriend. She told him that she was being followed by this man and was afraid to go outside to a car in case the man would follow her there. Her boyfriend told her to tell one of the employees and stay with them. She did as she was told, telling the cashier about what happened. The employees were super nice to her about it. They had someone look around the store for the man. My sister then said that while she was waiting at the checkout, she saw the man again. She saw her and ran out quickly out of the store. One of the employees then walked my sister to a car safely. And thankfully, she never saw the man outside or anywhere else after then. It was a summer night and I was around eight or nine years old. A group of six of us kids were playing manhunt, kind of like hide and seek, in our neighborhood. The street we played on was a dead end with a baseball field at the end. The field was undergoing construction, so there were big construction vehicles parked and big amounts of dirt. We were hiding and attempting to cross the field without getting caught by the opposing team. As we made our way across the field, a white truck flashed its light at us. We were startled because we didn't think there was anyone in the truck and one of my friends started to run. I froze up and noticed two old men in the truck. The driver laughed as he rolled down the window and said, it's too late for little girls to be out alone. He creeped me the fuck out. He had a thick mustache, wore big thick glasses and a baseball cap. We booked it out of there and I don't remember much else from that night. Other than the fact one of my friends was so scared, she literally pissed herself. Later on that week, one of my friends from that night and I were on our, one of our afternoon walks around town. As we walked by the town hall, something pulled me to take a closer look at one of the notices taped up into the window. It was a sex offender listing for the creepy driver of the white truck. Even at that young of an age, my friend and I were very aware of how dire a situation we could have been in that night. 